Martin and I have been asked to talk about Canada's diversity. There's no doubt that this is a tremendous asset for the country. When you take a look at what is going on, the problems that exist within Europe as only one example, but those that exist all over the world, there is no doubt that the respect for each other that we as Canadians are able to show to each other is really something quite unique. And it's also something that we should be prepared to take to the rest of, to take to the, rest of the world. Why we, why we have it, I think, is pretty clear. We are a nation that was founded at Confederation by two other nations who were at war with each other, the French and the English, and two religions, Catholic and Protestant, that were at war with each other, and we had to get along. So I think we should feel very proud of what we have done. But I've got to tell you, I think we should also recognize where we have not succeeded. The fact is that we do show that respect. We show that respect to the people who come here from, from everywhere as they build a new and stronger identity. But we don't show it to this country's first peoples. And you've got to ask yourself, why is that? These are the people who greeted us when we came here, who made sure that the settlers were able to survive. We dispossessed them of their land. We tried to do it of their culture. In terms of, instead of education, we offered them assimilation. And we refused to, to accept it. I've got to say that our values as Canadians in terms of respect for diversity are something that we should take around the world. But before we get too proud of ourselves, we better recognize we have an Achilles heel at home. And I think we should do something about it right now. Minister, when were you first notified of the state of emergency in At Attawapiskat? Uh, we, uh, I would say it was last week, about Thursday. Okay, just let me tell you a little bit about the area though. If you go along the lakeshore, which is the north end of the city, mm -hmm. straight out you'll find uh, it's native reserves out here, Ipperwash and so on. Ipperwash was uh, the big issue back in the days of Mike Harris as the mm -hmm. pre uh, premier and Dudley George was the man the, the man the police shot, the Indian that the police shot. So uh, from the time I've been here, which is only a couple of years now, nobody speaks of it. Uh, I go out there with my family and my grandchildren to Whipperwash Beach, which is run by the natives. Mm -hmm. uh, we all, everybody has a good time. It, they, it's run like a service, uh, like yeah. any service to the, to the uh, community and so on. Uh, there's a great golf course out here that I play called Indian Hills. <laughs> and um, uh, it's, uh, it's run by the natives now. Everybody, uh, I have to say, there, my comments that I've heard, everybody thought that it was going to go downhill yeah. uh, after they took over a few years ago. And it's been the complete opposite. It's, uh, it's probably one of the top uh, golf courses in this area, run very well, and they're very strict with respect to keeping it that way. Mm -hmm. Further south, uh, right down at the end of the line, the south end of Sarnia, is again, is more reserve area. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exact names, I'm sorry. Yeah. But uh, that's where everybody goes to pick up their cigarettes. <laughs> and so uh, they're very friendly people. They're nice neighbors. We see them in the malls. Uh, 
So I have no issues with respect to it. I don't know if anybody's holding grudges about mm -hmm. the Dudley George and Ipperwash Beach areas, but you would not think there was anybody holding a grudge mm -hmm. because I take my family out to the beach and everything is great. The skull and crossbones flag behind me is not a pirate flag. It turns out to be a, a warning sign that this area here is all toxic and cannot be lived on because the factories have caused an area where you cannot live on and the air, the water, even the soil is toxicated. Yes. Um, well, they most of the plants have been here my whole life. Um, I grew up seeing them, you know, the different smell, uh, you know, evacuation. We had to have the whole reserve pick up and leave. Never really not knowing what was being released or the harmful effects of the chemicals that could be, that are being released. Um, so... Suncor was proposing to build the world's largest ethanol plant adjacent to our community, and we had just said, you know, enough's enough. Like, leave us alone. Um, uh, just leave us alone. There's just too much. But we always thought that government or somebody was looking out for us. They wouldn't just let these plants be blowing everything off, and, you know, somebody was taking care of it and watching out for us. But from all our research and what we've learned, we found that that's not true. So what we were doing, so we wanted to fight the ethanol plant, so we start finding out health studies, any past health studies or any studies that had been done. So there was a study after Suncor, um, we were evacuated in December of 93, the whole reserve was evacuated, three or four o'clock in the morning, and we weren't allowed to come home for 12 hours till the next afternoon, whatever. And uh, so there was a questionnaire that went out to the community and everybody was concerned and they wanted health studies done. So we hired these people to do a study and so they did sediment sampling and testing the water and testing grasshoppers and stuff like that. But it was completed <clears throat> and it, nothing was red flagged or highlighted saying that we should take care of anything. So we pulled this out and we had uh, this Michael Gilbertson, he's a uh, biologist for the, oh, uh, I forget what he was, what his job was. Anyway, he looked at it, and uh, so he short-formed it and telling us what contaminations were found and where it was found. The recreational areas that are located so closely to the smokestacks that when you are exerting yourself in physical activity, you're breathing in chemicals which will harm you. Sirens are placed throughout the reserve to heed warnings of a chemical leak or problem from the surrounding plants creating fear and anxiety for the Amdenang. Our reserve now is approximately 3,000 acres. I forget how much it was to begin with, mm -hmm. but I know like in the 50s or something like that is when the, uh, these big corporations or whatever would come in to, to, to the reserve and trying to buy up the land. Well, a, an individual can't sell the land to anybody besides our own First Nations people. Mm -hmm. So they had to get the okay from the person themselves, decide on what price community as a whole through chief and council to decide. Do you have any message for uh, Torontonians or the students of Kipling that are watching this right now? Well, I would just uh, encourage everybody to watch our court case with uh, ecojustice.ca or 
You could even look up uh, my name, Ada Lockridge, Google the name and uh, see how much work we've been trying. We've been trying all different ways without going to court, without, you know, letting the government know, letting the people know what's happening here. And any way you could help us, um, whatever government officials that are out there that need to hear this, um, if we could point it in the right direction to get the help that we all need because it's just, it's just disgusting how, uh, you know, they do that to First Nations or, you know, to poor people, like people who can't afford lawyers and stuff like that. That's why we work with Eco Justice. They're a non-for-profit non environmental lawyer. So, and they work really well. And they, what they do is work on behalf of everybody. You know, it might be a concern here, but it does affect way more people than just what's here. So whenever they do their free work, it benefits everybody. It's shameful, okay? It is really shameful. But uh, also, like, there's a lot of things that go on. Uh, I used to work for CN Rail and used to have to go north uh, uh, quite a bit on business. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to go into places like Horn Payne and there's, you know, Native Reserve there and so on. And they have this beautiful downtown mall and so on. But uh, the Natives, it's a unique culture. It really is a unique culture because they felt more at home in their own little area than going to the malls and so on. And they and uh, and I think you can see that in our history with respect to uh, you know uh, natives who've come to the NHL and things like that. Mm -hmm. They're more comfortable in their own environment, so it's very difficult to adjust. Um, and and I'm sure I mean, you're from Toronto, yeah. multi the most multicultural city in North America, as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned. And uh, and everybody has to adjust. Yeah. It's a very diff difficult issue with respect to natives because they have a unique, unique culture and it's a bonding that's different mm -hmm. than most cultures where when somebody is uh, away from their family, their native families, it hurts them. And uh, so that's something that you have to get used to. Up north, I, I could understand, I know it's deplorable and so on, but a lot of people don't want to leave and we need to be there to assist them. But we need to be there and assist them with the, but we need to hear from them so that we can understand them. And that's what's missing. That's really what's missing. Somebody wants to go in there and say, we'll do it for you because this is what you need. Mm -hmm. That's not the way it has to be done. You have to understand that culture to, uh, to do that. Uh, I had a chance to look at, uh, you know, some very tough situations with housing, just really uh, five or six people in a room and, uh, you know, very bad uh, heating and, uh, Clearly, not enough housing going up to meet the demand and the need. Uh, uh, we really got to come to terms with this as Canadians. Uh, we, we have not yet fully, I think, figured out uh, how significant and how, how real this problem is. Uh, the Aboriginal community is no longer uh, way out there somewhere. They're actually uh, right next door. Uh, they're next door technologically. They're next door to us morally. Uh, and these are communities that we can't just abandon, and these are people we can't abandon. I'm mad tired man, make sure you reach the Indians on time. I'm gonna take a nap, so don't screw up. Yo, Ardeep, wake up man. Wake up! Man, we've arrived. Uh, Yo, wake up man, we've arrived! What are you talking about man? That's Yo, cool. we're here. Uh, yeah man, look. Uh, look, we're here man, look around. 
This is Martin, bro. Yeah, man. He asked for Indians. Native Indians, not brown Indians. Dude, well, he could have specified. Jesus, man. Holy.